What's going on? My name's Jay, and today we're going to be taking a look at DaVinci Resolve versus Filmora 9 in order to answer the question, which editor is right for you? Let's take a look. All right, if you've spent any amount of time on my channel, you know that I use DaVinci Resolve. I use it to edit all of the videos on my channel as well as all of my client videos. And depending on which video brought you to my channel in the first place, you might also know that before I used DaVinci Resolve, I was using Premiere Pro. But what not all of you may know is that before Premiere Pro, when I first started making videos, I was using an editing software called Wondershare Filmora. And I actually really, really liked it because it really is a good piece of software. So this video is less of a which app is better and more of a which one is right for you. Now, if you get to the end of this video and you decide to go with DaVinci Resolve as your editor of choice, I invite you to stick around, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, all of those things because I do DaVinci Resolve tutorials every single week. But if you want to go with Filmora, then I highly suggest you check out Daniel Batal because he's got some awesome, awesome Filmora tutorials and he'll get you started off in the right direction. All right, let's jump into the comparison starting with the price. Now, DaVinci Resolve does have a free version and it's the version that I use to edit every single video that I make. Now, if you want some added features, some added effects, as well as GPU acceleration, which is super nice, then you can get DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is a one-time payment of $300. Filmora has a few different pricing options. There's a $60 one-time fee to get the full version of the software, tech support, all the future updates, and everything like that. Now, if you can't swing 60 bucks right off the bat, but you can swing 40, they do have an option for paying 40 bucks a year, which gets you essentially the same thing. Now, if you want a little bit more and you want unlimited downloads from the film stocks library, if you want new effects every single month, then you can pay hundred dollars a year and unlock all of that. Now, when it comes to downloading and installing both, it's a very, very easy, painless process. Download the installer, click on the installer to open it up up and install. I will say that the process does take a little bit longer with DaVinci Resolve because it's a heavier piece of software. There's more stuff to install. So obviously it's going to take longer, but either way, a couple clicks of a button and you're done. Now, when it comes to stability, both of the softwares themselves are very, very stable. Now I will say this, if you are working on a lower spec computer, you might want to lean more towards Filmora because it's made more as a middle of the road thing. Now, every software does have their system requirements, but if your system is a little bit older, then Filmora might work a little bit better on your computer. And that's not to say that DaVinci Resolve is unstable. In fact, it's very, very stable, unless of course you're trying out one of the beta versions and it's still buggy, then you might get some crashes. But overall, the, the full versions of DaVinci Resolve are very, very stable. The only time it's ever crashed on me is not because of a bug or a glitch or something like that. It's always been because I overloaded my computer and I did more than my computer can handle. And in order to protect itself, it shut down DaVinci Resolve. Other than that, it works great. Now, when it comes to opening up the software and starting a new project, it's both easy. You click on the icon, you hit new project. Now, the only difference really between the two is that you give your project a name right away with DaVinci Resolve and with Wondershare Filmora, you give it a name, I think when you first save, like you, I haven't yet had to give it a name when I first started the new project. And then once you have your project open, you can go into your project settings, adjust the resolution and the frame rate. Now, there are a lot more options with DaVinci Resolve because there's a lot more features, but for the most part, you're only gonna have to adjust your frame rate and your resolution and you can get started editing your project. Now, like I said, Filmora 9 does come with all future updates when you purchase it. And so does DaVinci Resolve, both the studio version and the free version. Now the updating process, I will say definitely is faster in Filmora. You it just it alerts you when you have an update, you click update and it updates and you're done with DaVinci Resolve. You have to, you know, you can start the update from within the app, but then you got to close out of the app. It downloads the installer. You open up the installer. Basically it's a brand new, fresh install every single time, at least as far as the procedure is concerned. And that's not a big deal. It's still an easy process. It's just some extra steps and I'm lazy. Where we really start to see these softwares pull away from each other is in workflow and 
editing and stuff like that. Let's start with editing and putting together a timeline where there's a couple key differences that you should know about. First of all, DaVinci Resolve is both a source monitor and a playback monitor. So what I can do is I can drag my full video clip, all of my original footage into the source monitor and I can cut up little sections of that main clip and just drag those sections into the timeline. When it comes to Filmora, they don't have that. They only have a playback monitor. So in order to do this, I need to drag the entire video clip into the timeline and then do all of my cutting and moving around and all of my stitching together there. Personally, I find it to be a faster workflow and I can bring things into a source monitor and only drag the clips that I need into the timeline, but everybody works differently. The other key difference when it comes to putting a timeline together is the fact that when you drag a video clip into the timeline in DaVinci Resolve, the audio and the video are automatically separated into different tracks. With Filmora, when you drag something in, it's the same track. Now you can right click and you can hit detach audio and it'll bring the audio into a separate audio track and then you can edit kind of the same way you would in DaVinci Resolve, but that's an added step and again, I'm lazy. Other than that, a lot of the basic tools are there in both softwares. You've got your blade tool, your select tool, you can you know, trim and clip and all that stuff. You can use ripple delete. All of that stuff is basically the same. So it's actually just physically putting a timeline together with the exception of those two key differences. They're actually very, very similar. But once we get away from that basic stuff, these two softwares are very vastly different. Let's start with color grading. Now DaVinci Resolve has kind of an unfair advantage here because it was built as a color grading tool originally. It was just made to color grade Hollywood films. And because of that, there's a ton of features and a ton of control. You can, you can do whatever you want. You've got grading, you've got masking, you've got curves, you've just, anything you can think of basically you've got in DaVinci Resolve. Now the upside to that is you have full control and you can basically do whatever you want. The downside is the learning curve is a lot steeper. With Filmora you can do basic color work. Like you can do white balance and exposure and temperature and hue and all of that stuff. You can even do hue, saturation, and luminance, contrast, and adjusting your, your whites and your highlights and your shadows and your blacks. And you can do that, all the basic stuff, but you don't have nearly as many features and you don't have nearly as much control. Now that's the downside. The upside is that the learning curve is a lot less steep. So if you're not worried about having full control over your color and you just want to be able to look, you know, presentable, then you can absolutely do that in Filmora. Now both DaVinci Resolve and Filmora allow for the use of LUTs on your footage and they both come with built in LUTs, but the difference between the two is fairly significant. When it comes to DaVinci Resolve, the LUTs are more like utility LUTs, simulating film stocks or bringing log to Rec. 709, stuff like that. There are some creative LUTs, but for the most part, if you're looking for something creative, you're gonna have to download it from the internet and install it. When it comes to Filmora, it's all creative LUTs. You don't get any kind of utility. So working with log is kind of a no-go. You can do things like put on a LUT that makes it look like the movie 300 or turn Terminator or Mission Impossible or Star Wars or stuff like that. It's honestly a little bit more gimmicky. I would much rather use the LUTs that are in DaVinci Resolve. The other big difference in color grading is the fact that there's no adjustment layers or nodes or anything in Filmora, which means you are doing what's called destructive editing. You are altering the original image, which a lot of people think is a big no-no. Now with DaVinci Resolve, you do non-destructive editing. You can do adjustment layers. You can use nodes and stuff like that, so it's easier to to preserve the original image in case you need to go back to that. Audio editing is basically the same thing. With DaVinci Resolve, you've got all the tools. You've got EQ, compression, you got limiters, you got DSers, you've got anything that you could possibly need to get a good professionally sounding video. With Filmora, it's a lot simpler than that. You got fade in, fade out. You've got some presets for an equalizer. You can do a multi-band equalizer as well to get a more custom sound, and you can remove background noise. But past that, there's not really anything you can do other than adjusting the levels and, and panning left and right. So it's a lot simpler. 
which means it's a less steep learning curve, which is good. So if all you want to do is make it sound presentable, you can absolutely do that in Filmora. But if you want full control, you want this thing to sound professional, then you're going to want to go with DaVinci Resolve. There's also a trade-off when it comes to effects. With DaVinci Resolve, you've got Fusion built in, which is a node-based effects editor, and you can do basically everything you want. You can build your own effects and kind of do whatever you want. With DaVinci Resolve, all the effects are preset, and you can kind of layer them on top of each other a little bit and sort of kind of create your own effects. But for the most part, it's really simple. Drag and drop onto your footage and you're kind of done after a little bit of tweaking. Same thing with titles. It's a little bit less custom, which if that's what you're going for, that's fine. If you just want to get a video out quickly, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want full control, you want to, you want to be able to build all of your effects, then you're going to want to go with DaVinci Resolve. Now, the caveat to this is that if you're on a lower spec computer, then those drag and drop effects that you have in Wondershare, Filmora are going to be the right way to go because it's easier to overwhelm your computer with DaVinci Resolve. Now, a couple other things to mention, a couple other features that both DaVinci Resolve and Filmora 9 share are the ability to create proxy files to get smoother playback, the ability to render previews in order to get smoother playback and also little things like being able to record a voiceover, being able to add markers to your timeline and to your video clips and stuff like that. I will say that one feature that I really wish Filmora had that DaVinci Resolve does have is the ability to do tracking. But when it comes down to it, it all depends on what you need in an editor. If you're looking to do professional quality videos where you're going to be doing stuff for clients, you want full control over the color grading and the sound design and all of that stuff, then DaVinci Resolve is absolutely 100% the way to go. That's what it was designed for. But if you're doing YouTube videos, social media videos, or even videos for, you know, just family and friends, home movies, stuff like that, you want to be able to put something together quickly. You want to be able to make it look, you know, good and presentable and even high quality, if not fully professional, then Filmora is right for you. There's no need to go through the process of learning everything in DaVinci Resolve if that's all you're going to be doing. Now, if you're planning on giving DaVinci Resolve a shot and you want to start with the basic and get started right, then check out this video right here. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about video editing, color grading, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video. Go watch it now.